Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Leadership Lounge with Marlo Foster. Joining us today is Yulia Meter. Yulia is not only a former colleague, but a dear friend. Today, we're going to be discussing a unique topic with Yulia. She is a fellow podcaster and life coach who focuses on helping partners of expats live fulfilling lives. This interview will be an interesting journey on how Yulia fully realized her life's mission. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to kick back on the Leadership Lounge with Marlo Foster. So, Yulia, I want to thank you for joining us today in the Leadership Lounge. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. So, for a lot of people, making a significant shift in their life is a very difficult thing to do. But before we get to the shift that you made in your life, can you talk a little bit about your early career in business? Yeah, uh, actually, yeah. So thank you for having me. It's, it's really exciting to be on an American podcast <laughs> because normally I just do German podcasts. I actually was always a little bit of a drifter. I never knew exactly what I wanted. I just wanted uh, something that really fulfilled me. I was always looking for the one thing that really made me happy. Mm -hmm. And um, I always saw it in my sister, actually. Um, she um, became, she knew very early on that she wanted to become a piano builder. Hmm. And so it's something very special, very unique. And I always loved it. And I, I wanted to be as happy and fulfilled as she was. So I started to, I wanted to become a science journalist first. Hmm. Then, um, because I loved um, writing, I loved biology and I was very curious about life so mm -hmm. I thought journalism would be good so I studied biology to become a science journalist mm -hmm. then I was a freelance science journalist and I hated it because I didn't <laughs> like the freelancing part and the not earning money and just cold calling and so on and so then I joined a large corporation and the money part was good <laughs> I did mm -hmm. innovation communications there and I loved having all those people around me but I the job was okay, but it was not really fulfilling. Hmm. And then, uh, but I stayed because it was just, all the other things were just nice and I didn't know what to do else. Yeah. And then, yeah, my husband was sent on an assignment to the US and I went with him. And yeah, so then that's where we met. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I worked there as well. I was, I'm actually very grateful because my husband negotiated uh, in his package that I had a job there as well. Mm -hmm. It's very, mm -hmm. very nice. And um, so I worked there for some time. Then I did my coach training um, in the US and I um, quit my local contract there. Mm -hmm. And then we went back to Germany. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to the corporation, but I was in the wrong place. I knew that. <laughs> and then I quit and started my <laughs> So, and here I am. <laughs> yeah, and here you are. So here you are uh, kind of, of helping, you know, expats, helping people really find their way in life. So mm -hmm. uh, before we specifically get to that, and I don't want to make this more dramatic than it is, but, but when did you start to first see signs that you know, your current career really wasn't what you wanted. Really, you weren't really passionate about it. Because I think for a lot of people, especially when you're trying to support a family, when you're with a spouse, when you're bringing in income, you know, taking that deep breath and saying honestly to yourself, I'm truly not happy here. I'm truly not fulfilled uh, is a tough thing to do as the individual and a tough conversation to have with your life partner. So okay, kind of talk to us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I, um, as I said before, I, I, I always was a drifter. I always mm -hmm. was looking for something more, something more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And at some point in my life, I thought maybe it's not out there. Maybe yeah. that's just it. Maybe I just have to, to deal with it, what I, what I have. And, have to make the best out of it. And I, um, so I knew early on that I wanted more or something different, but I never knew mm -hmm. what it was. And that was the problem. When I was in a good place in my life, I was mm -hmm. able to look at it and try to find it, what I really mm -hmm. wanted. Mm -hmm. But when I was in not such a good place, I um, really avoided looking there because it hurt so much. Yeah. Um, that never feeling really fulfilled and not knowing what to do. And when you see other people in your life, like my sister, who uh -huh. was 
so like when she doesn't touch a piano for three days, she gets re really antsy. She's like, mm. oh, it's awful for her. And I, like, Wait, I want that too. Oh, yeah, that's what I want that in my life. <laughs> and um, so this is, yeah, when, um, so I was always looking and then at one point I found it. Oh, and I had a very interesting experience. My, um, a good friend of mine, we were pregnant at the same time. Mm -hmm. And she, um, we were, uh, so we had a lot of time because in Germany, we have a lot of time when you are <laughs> pregnant and when you had a baby because we have all this maternity. It's getting better stuff. in the U.S. Yeah. It's still not perfect. But it's yes, but in Germany, it's really like you have so much time on your And so we went for walks all the time with the babies and everything and talked about our jobs. And we were both, mm -hmm. yeah, they're okay. But yeah, but they're just okay. And then I went to the US and she went to Brazil and then uh, with her husband. And then we both came back at one point um, to Germany and we met. And I looked at her and I was like, what's, what's going on with her? She's so happy and like grounded and she was like radiant. It was, it was like, okay, I want that too. Whatever it is, I want that too. Mm. Because I knew um, how it was before. And she had done a coaching actually mm. and found out what she really wanted to do. And it was, she was, she's more into activity and sports. And so she um, set up a training, an online training for, for moms um, to get back. Okay. Into it. okay. And she was so happy. And I was like, okay, I want that too. Yeah. So I did the same coaching like she did with the same uh -huh. coach. And uh -huh. then I found out that I wanted to be a coach actually as well. And I had seen it before because I was doing change communication a lot and I liked it. I, everybody else hated it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those projects, yeah. uh, because it was so, I mean, if other people lose their jobs and you, you're working on those projects and you're trying to streamline everything and yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard for the people who are affected by it. And I just mm -hmm. loved it, not because they were losing their jobs, but I could help because before when I um, was in communications and I wrote a press release, it was, I would send it out and it was out there and yeah, I mean, yeah. I never, <laughs> yeah, you never heard that from was you. it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and it didn't change the world. And um, but when I did this um, change communication, I knew that the way I helped to communicate this project, I could help people to move through this change curve faster, or mm -hmm. um, deal with their emotions better. Or mm -hmm. when I wrote a speech for one of the executives, I mm -hmm. knew the way I wrote it and we, we could tweak it, that it would change how people perceived the change. Yeah. And this helped me. And, and I was in such a conflict because I liked it so much. And, it was, <laughs> um, and yeah, so I, I found um, at that, around that time when I did those change projects that I really mm -hmm. liked to help people deal with their emotions mm -hmm. and take their life into their own hands and change something. So I want to get into your business next, but just want to ask you one additional question. So you, so you had this role where you worked on change. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had change projects and then you said, ah, I like this. I like when I do something, it's going to impact people. Was it just simply that you didn't have enough of those projects in your role? Because you, when you were talking about it, I'm, I'm looking at you and you're lighting up. Like, that was cool. I'm excited about that. So, you know, what made you know that even though you did those change projects, you had to strike out on your own? Uh, was it just that you needed to do it every day, all day as your focus or kind of what, what was that? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, in a large corporation, there's a lot of politics on the inside. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> and so, and I'm a very, how do you say that? I'm a curious person. I'm a very receptive. So I know when mm -hmm. something's going on. All right. And uh, of course, for some reasons, because somebody else was chosen to do the project or whatever, yeah. I wasn't involved in all the projects. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, but I knew that they were going on and I hated it. <laughs> I, <laughs> That's really like, I want to be in control. I want to, <laughs> I want to be in the project and I want to help and I want to um, work on that. And I couldn't. And then I had to write the press releases and again, and I was like, okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, enough. I'm going to do it myself. All right. So, so. I wanted to do it, yeah. So I wanted to do it all the time. And I also to do, wanted to do po like positive change because it was always people were going through this change against their own will. 
They wanted right. to keep their job and just stay in the position they are. And I wanted to work with people who really wanted to change something um, from themselves coming, like coming from them and that they take their own lives into their own hands. So I wanted to, to do that. And I couldn't do this in the uh, communications department. <laughs> all right. So tell us about the business. All right. You know, give us a name. Tell us about what you've been doing. Yeah, you know, I mean, how you work. Just hit us with it. Okay, good. Um, so I started three years ago, my own business. I'm, I'm a full-time um, life coach. I am, the name is DreamFinder Coaching. Uh, I was actually looking for a title that would work in German and in English. I mean, it's, a, it's an English word, but mm -hmm. all the Germans understand it too. Oh, okay. And I, yeah, so I work full-time. I have my office at my, at my house. Uh, which is really nice. And I mostly work with, with expat partners. So people mm -hmm. like, um, like I was, I'm not working with the expats per se who are working, mm -hmm. who are on the yeah. assignment, but with the partners who accompany them. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they're not working. And as I was in the position as well, um, that I accompanied my husband to the US, I know very well what they're going through because it's a, they have very, they're in a very unique position and have very specific needs and I know them so I can work with them but I also work with other people who just want to create their own life like their own they just take their own life in their own hands and just create something that they really like and where they're not looking anymore for something else that, that can fulfill them and I'm mostly working actually um online via zoom I, I can't uh -huh. do telephone coaching it's, yeah yeah it's, it's <laughs> weird because I have to see the person so right. I'm working with zoom um, most of the time, um, but also people come here as well. And I um, have two podcasts, uh -huh. um, the Expert Partner podcast, um, which is specifically geared towards expert partners, but I'm covering all sorts of topics like gratitude and all those life coaching mm -hmm. things that make your life better. And I also have another German um, podcast, which is the, called Eigenstimmig, do this together with a partner and we are interviewing women who integrated the, their passion into their lives um, yeah. as a job or as a lifestyle or as a hobby. So yeah, yeah I, well, I was going to ask that question. So, so when you're going through a life coaching session with someone, so they, they reach out to you and they say, Julia, I need your help. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm not happy. I, I don't know what my role is in the household. My partner is working. I'm staying at home. I mean, are you trying you know, how do you help them? Uh, you know, do you talk about their passions? Do you tell them to make a list? I mean, what do you do with them? <laughs> you know, how do you get going? <laughs> okay. So, um, so what I do is normally it's, it's classic coaching. It's um, mm. so we have a session. I ask questions and they talk and they give the answers. And I always assume that they are, creative resourceful and whole so i know that they the answer is already inside of them and mm -hmm. my questions just just help to get these answers out so this okay. is a normal just a, a coaching session where we talk i yeah. also have so you're almost like a psychologist you're almost sitting them on the couch laying down saying tell me all of your problems <laughs> Kind of. I'm just, I'm just, I don't have the training. <laughs> there are actually a few things that I will not touch. When I see some red flags like depression or mm. alcohol abuse or mm. um, grief, something that mm. they need to work through with a therapist, I will mm. um, call it out and mm -hmm. tell the person so because I'm not qualified to do that. And if I try to work on that, um, I might get make things worse. So I have right. to say it. That's my kind of my, my ethic. And then I, um, but we can still work together on the more forward looking part. Right. I it's actually, the first thing I, I learned in coach training is that when you are the, the, the difference between a coach and a um, therapist, uh -huh. um, a therapist is like an archeologist. You say okay. that like this. Yeah. He uncovers things that are hidden Okay. And just brings them to the surface and then you can look at them and work with them. And a coach is more like an architect who takes good things, healthy things, and just builds something out of it. So it's really just moving forward and building something up and not just looking at the past. This is the yeah. therapist. So, okay. so how do I work with them? Yeah, and what I also yeah. have is, is a test. Um, it's, an, it's an online test um, where... I can look at what motivates people, what really drives them forward. Is it more mm. 
family or justice or harmony or do they want power? Those are the things they have, have to, all those, we call it motives in, in German. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then you can just look at like um, what drives you really, what, what really energizes you and what holds you back. And then I look at the person specifically. So, and it really depends on what the person wants and where they, where they are. Because right. they're all in so many different places. And it's really, it's really, you have to look at the individual situation on, yeah, what you can do with them. So, I mean, outside of the more, you know, you talked about the areas that you um, don't get into, you know, depression, alcoholism, things like that. So you, you get this assessment, you have this forward looking view for them. All right, I hear you. These are the things you say you want. How do you push them out there uh, and say, all right, he, here is the plan for you to go get it. Here's how you get started. You know, how does that first coaching nudge take place? Okay. Yeah. It's very funny that most people think that a, that a coach will give advice and we never do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I will never say, okay, let's do that. <laughs> I, okay. I might give homework, okay. but it's more like mm-hmm. to reflect on things okay. and to come up with your own answers. But in the end, the, the, the client has to say, this is what I want to do. I choose to do this because this is so much more powerful. The person says herself, I want to do that. And this mm-hmm. is what I need to do right now. But what I do first, and this is always the hard part for the clients. Mm-hmm. If, for example, let's take somebody who's not happy um, in her job and she just wants something else. She doesn't know what. This is a very common scenario. Somebody comes to me. Mm -hmm. And then what I would do, I would go inside with them. They have to do the inner work first because most Mm -hmm. people think, okay, I would change something. I would change my job. I just go somewhere else. I do this or that. And then after a few weeks, then the honeymoon phase is over with the new job. And then they're like, oh, okay, same old. I'm always, it's it's again, I'm not happy. So I did something wrong. But if you go inside and really look at like, and it, it, it's so hard to go inside and look at the, the things, what you really want, how you are, what holds you back. And you do this inner work, then you can start after that. You know what you really want and then you can start to change your, your, your outer world. Mm-hmm. But you have to do the inner work first. And this is where I guide them. And then we really look at stuff and what is going on there. Why do you think you can't be visible why do you think you can be on a stage somewhere for example um this really is is borderline therapy (laughs) (laughs) because if you look at life like why i mean if somebody for example doesn't want to be on a stage and and give a presentation why is that and sometimes they had in school they had a bad experience or and they were told by their mom it's not good as a woman to to be that present just stay in the back for example so you look at these things and then you work on them and then people start opening up and start seeing what they what they really want most people have no idea what they want they think they know what they want but it's often what other people told them what they should want right and and it's it's scary sometimes to look at the things because it might mean that you need to change not only your job Mm. which is already a major thing, but maybe you need to change some other things in your life that you maybe you don't want to change because right. it's so tough. But yeah. then you have to real, take a real honest look. And the question is, I mean, nobody else should create your life or design your life. You mm. should do it yourself. And most people are afraid to do that. And I help mm. them to do that and to really take a close look. And then they can start changing everything in the outer world. It takes some time though. <laughs> so have you, um, in, in all the, the coaching you've done uh, up to this point, did any coaching experience really stand out in your mind where someone came to you, uh, they were struggling terribly and then you worked with them and now you look back, you're like, I'm so proud or I'm so amazed that, uh, they've made such a significant change in your life. Anything that, that, that you feel extremely proud about? Um, yes, actually, there's one person. She is kind of, she's my ideal client, I would say. <laughs> she, is, she came to me and the first thing, like she wrote me an email and said, okay, somebody suggested I should contact you and get some coaching. 
-hmm. but um, she was also an expat partner. But I'm not sure if I'm if I'm suitable for coaching. I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea what. Yeah. (laughs) And then and so we did a a trial session, Mm -hmm. and and then uh, she really liked it because she was so. um, She said, okay. Um, she cried and she said, um, I, I can't remember the last time I cried in front of somebody else than apart from my husband. Mm. Oh. And so she said, okay, so I want to, I want to work with you. And then we started working and she wanted to find out what she wanted to do in her, in her career after mm-hmm. she came back to Germany, but she wasn't sure. Uh, yeah, she ha- she had no idea what to do. And she also had a hard time visualizing it and so on. And so we worked more on this, the whole expert partner thing. Mm-hmm. And then at one point, things happened so fast. Like we had a little bit of a stagnation in between. And then at one point, she just, for some reason, all the, the floodgates were open. Uh-huh. And she, she had a real problem with like showing herself to the world. And like she was retracting. You could see that. And then she started doing a podcast. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and it, was, it, it was very simple. <laughs> And very easy. And in the beginning was like, I just do it for myself. I don't want anybody uh-huh. to listen to it, actually. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, uh-huh. we just put it on, I- on iTunes anyway, okay? Yeah. okay. Uh-huh. And then um, I helped her put it up and everything. Mm. And then she had so much fun with it. And she's mm. now, she has, um, I don't know, 20 episodes or something. Mm. And uh-huh. she is just going deeper and deeper mm-hmm. and oh, opening up. And she's like, why are people not coming back to me and, and sending me emails and questions? I want to <laughs> And she's like, really, she, she's opening up. And now she also, and that was a surprise for me actually, because mm. it wasn't going in the direction. She's now doing a coach training herself. Ah, and, um, she's trying to she's trying to take money out of your mouth julia yes. she's got her own business <laughs> <laughs> i helped her open out and open up and now she's i <laughs> got her own business <laughs> yeah but it's, it's so interesting to see what what this does to her and it um she still hasn't found what she really wants to do mm-hmm. um but her whole life has changed because she opened up to the world right and uh, um that is so amazing to see it's just that's the best <laughs> That's a great story. So uh, we've had some good time uh, together today. So I kind of just wanted to think about, you know, in closing. So you're in Germany. Uh, where specifically are you located in Germany? Uh, it's called Neustadt an der Weinstraße. And it's uh-huh. near Mannheim, Heidelberg, that area. Okay. So, so, uh, so uh, you're primarily working with expats right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I assume your business, just you know, given all the technology, you consider it a global business, will work with yes. anybody. So if someone wanted to reach out to you uh, and say, hey, Yuli, I need your help. I- I'm a little bit lost. How do they reach out to you? What's the best way? My website is a good way to start. And this is dreamfinder-coaching.de. The com, dot com is not working right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I screwed Technology. Up I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, but the DE for Germany, Deutschland. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, most people think Den- Denmark for some reasons. No, it's DE for Germany. Oops. Or just send me an email to julia at dreamfinder-coaching.de. Or you can... Yeah. And I'm on Instagram and on Facebook and everywhere, so... That's not, I'm not on Twitter though. <laughs> <laughs> no tweeting. I was like, okay, yeah, no, yeah, just too, too much. much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it has been an absolute uh, joy. It's been great to see your face. Great to have this discussion with you. Uh, thank you for the time. And I look forward to our listeners uh, just giving some feedback on the inspiration that you provided today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's actually one more thing that I wanted to say because. Okay. Um, you ask about my experience in the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. and um, also working there in the culture, and mm-hmm. and this changed my life so much. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not saying this because you're the host of this podcast, but right. I'm telling people all the time: having colleagues like you over there it was really that was life changing for me. And I just want to encourage everybody who has. Um, who works abroad or also who has who works in the U S and is, or is an American and um, has colleagues coming over from other countries, mm. the way we could talk and I could ask you anything I could ask, <laughs> like 
why did this woman say this? And <laughs> how, would you, how would you say this? Is it allowed to do this? And so on. Right, right. There was, I just felt so like I was part of the culture and mm -hmm. it helped me so much to understand um, the culture and where I was. And I just, it was just an amazing experience and you were a major part of this. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to thank you for this. And uh, I can just encourage everybody to, to just talk openly wherever you are and just um, connect on a deeper level. It's so important and it makes your life so much richer. So thank you for that. And also thank you that I could be here today. Uh, thank you so much, Julie. Uh, have a wonderful day and thanks for joining us in the Leadership Lounge. Thank you. I wish you a wonderful day too.